Here we're going to use the mesh current method to solve this problem on the board, which simply stated is basically what is the power supplied by the 100 volt source? So we have a 100 volt source, we have a resistor network, very similar to other problems we've done in the past. And we're again building our complexity up in, in, in the terms of our problems. So we need to figure out how do we use mesh currents to solve this thing. Well, the first thing we want to basically do in the end game is we want to figure out if we're trying to find the power supplied by the source, we need to know the current flowing through that source. And then we can do I times V and that gives us the power. So we're going to use mesh currents. The first thing we need to do is identify where are our meshes. Well, if you think of this as guy as a cookie cutter, then a mesh will be here, a mesh will be this whole rectangular region at the top, and then a mesh would be this whole rectangular region over on the side like that. So we need to label these guys, uh, and it's up to you how exactly how you label them, but I always go clockwise, so I, I literally go in my circuit and I label it like this, I sub A. And then I go to, it doesn't matter if I go here or here, it really doesn't matter. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to draw something like this and I'm going to call it I sub B and then I'm going to go over here, I sub C. When you force yourself to draw the mesh current directions, it helps you visual, in my opinion, it helps you visualize what you're doing as you go around the circuit. Like when I get to this leg, I'm gonna to have to subtract two currents and it helps me visualize what direction the mesh currents are going. So don't skip that step. Don't just say, oh, this is mesh A, B, and C. Let me just write my equations. I would always write, draw the circle, A, B, C. Or if you wanna label this I, B, and I, C, that's fine too. Doesn't really matter. So let's go and deal with mesh A. So I'm gonna put a little A here. I'm writing the equa equation for mesh A. So let's start at this corner, go through the 100 volt source, through the 5 ohm resistor, through the 40 ohm resistor, and then back, and then we'll be done. So we're doing summing voltages, right? Anytime you have a voltage rise from negative to positive, you have to treat it as a negative in your equation because this is basically a Kirchhoff voltage law. So we do negative 100. Now, when we get up to the 5 ohm resistor, we're going through it this direction. Uh, a rule of thumb is you basically always pretend that the uh, real current flowing through it is in the direction that you're traveling, basically. So that it produces a voltage drop from plus to minus, so that I can treat it as a positive sign in my equation writing. So, if I assume there's a voltage drop from plus to minus, then that means there really is a current going this way. But notice I've board I'm bordering two meshes. IA is actually going this direction. IB is actually going in the opposite direction. So the way I handle that is I say IA minus IB. That's the current flowing in the 5 ohm resistor in this direction. Then I multiply by 5. This expression is the voltage drop across the 5 ohm resistor in the direction assuming that it was plus to minus. That means I have current flowing this direction and I'm, of course I'm walking around in the same direction. IA minus IB gives us that implied direction. Alright, so we're done with that. That's the voltage drop. Now, we go over here and we're going to, when we get through to the 40 ohm resistor, we're going to again assume that the net current flowing through this resistor is actually going down. So that when I walk through it in that same direction, I can put a plus sign in my equation. So if I'm assuming the net current's going down, if IA is circulating in a down manner and IC is circulating opposite, then it's going to be IA minus IC. All right, now that we have the subtraction here, that is the current flowing down through the 40 ohm resistor. We have to obviously multiply by 40 because it's I times R. That's gonna give us that voltage drop and we set it equal to zero. So again, just take stock of what we're doing. As we walk through we're, and we hit a resistor that borders you know, two of these meshes, we're basically assuming the voltage drop is gonna be plus minus so we can have a positive sign here. We're assuming the voltage drop we get here is plus minus so we can have a positive sign here. If you actually have voltage drops here and here, that means the current must be going this way. So I subtract it, IA minus IB. IA is going this way, IB is going opposite to make that happen. I Over here, I assume IA is going down, IC is fighting it, so I do IA minus IC. That gives me a net current down, which gives me the voltage drop that I want. So that's what you need to be thinking about as you as you are writing these mesh current equations. As you go around to the resistors that, that are, well you have to do a subtraction where it borders two meshes. Basically assume you're gonna hit a voltage drop and, and therefore you're assuming you have current flowing through the resistor in the direction that you're walking. And if you make that assumption, then you have to subtract these guys in a certain order because in this case, for instance, IA is going down, IC is fighting it, so you have to make that subtraction like this. 
All right, so now we simplify it. We have negative 100 plus 5 times IA minus 5 times IB. Over here, we have 40 IA minus 40 I sub C is equal to 0. Now we look for IAs. We have 5 and a 40, so we have 45 times I sub A. IB is just negative 5. I sub B. I C is negative 40. I sub C. And the constant term is negative 100. We're going to move it to the other side of the equal sign, giving us positive 100 like this. So that is our basically our mesh current equation for mesh A after we fully simplified it. And we know from looking at this guy that we have three meshes, so we're going to require three equations. So it really is a little bit simpler, in my opinion, than node voltage. There's really fewer things to manipulate. It's just distributing and collecting terms. Bam, you're done. Okay, so let's go and do, let's do this color right here. Let's do mesh B. This is mesh B right here. So you need to circulate and do a, a complete guy like this. And you can start anywhere you want. Let's go ahead and start right here. Walk through the 5 ohm resistor, then through the 20 ohm, and then through the 10 ohm. So let's start right here. If you're going to walk through the 5 ohm this way, you're pretending that the current in this 5 ohm resistor really is going this way. And if it really is going this way, that gives you a voltage drop that's positive. So it lets us treat it as positive. And if it's really going this way, then it's going to be IB, which is flowing that way, minus IA. So let me say we're working on mesh current B. So what you're going to have is IB minus I sub A times 5. Because this is assuming the current's going this way, I times R is the voltage drop. All right. Now, when we get up to the 20 ohm resistor, this resistor doesn't border anything else. IB is flowing in this direction, so we have a voltage drop plus to minus, so we have a plus I times R, which is IB times 20. That's I times R. Okay, that's the voltage drop across this. And then when we get around to the, one, uh, to the 10 ohm resistor, again, we're traveling this direction, so we pretend the current really is flowing this way through the resistor, which is going to give us that positive negative voltage drop, so I can treat it as a positive in my equation. The current's going this way. It's going to be I sub B, which is flowing this way, minus I sub C, which is fighting it. So I sub B minus I sub C, which is fighting it. That's multiplied by 10 because V is equal to IR. And then you have zero. This is the mesh current equation for mesh B. Now we just simplify. 5 times IB minus 5 times IA. Here we have 20 times IB. Here we have 10 times IB. Here we have minus 10 times IC equals zero. So now we collect terms. The only IA I have is right here. So I have negative 5 I sub A. I have 5 IB, 20, and 10. So here's 35. So I have 35 I sub B. And then I have my negative 10 IC, that's the only thing I have here, negative 10 I sub C. And there are no constant terms anywhere, so we just set it equal to zero. This is the second mesh current equation that we're trying to solve. All right. Now, we need to work on mesh C. So we've done mesh A and mesh B. Let's look at mesh C. And again, you can start anywhere you like. I'm going to start here, and then I'm going to go through the 40 ohm, through the 10 ohm, through the 15 ohm, back to where I started, and then I'm done. So if I'm starting here and going through the 40 ohm resistor, I'm going to assume that the net current really is flowing up through this resistor so that I'll have a positive to negative voltage drop. So that lets me treat it positive in my equation. So if the current really is going this way, then it's going to be I sub C minus IA, which is fighting it. So it's going to be... I sub C minus I A, which is really fighting it. That's the current multiplied by the resistance, which is 40 ohms. That gives me the voltage drop as I travel this direction. Okay? And so what I have then is I get to the 10 ohm resistor. And again, I'm going to assume and pretend that the actual net current is flowing this way through the resistor so that I'll encounter a voltage drop. So I can treat it positive in my equation. I'll put a positive there. So if the current really is going this way, then it's going to be I sub C minus IB, which is fighting it. So I'll say I sub C minus I sub B, which is fighting it, multiplied by the resistance, which is 10. This is the voltage drop across the 10 ohm resistor. Okay. 
Now, when I get over to the 15 ohm resistor, there, there's nothing that borders it, so the only current that can possibly be in here is just I sub C. And it's already in the proper direction, so I should encounter a positive negative voltage drop. So it's going to be a positive sign of my equation, IR, I, sub, I sub C times 15. And this is the mesh current equation for mesh C. All right, so let's multiply everything out. 40 I sub C minus 40 I sub A. Over here we have 10 times I sub C minus 10 times I sub B. Over here we have 15 I sub C and that's equal to zero. So that's everything here, and then we look over here, where or do I have my IAs? The only one I have is here, so I have negative 40 I sub A. I sub B is the only one I have, which is right here, negative 10 times I sub B. That's all I have there. And then I sub C, I have 40 plus 10 is 50, plus uh, 15 should be 65 I sub C, so I have 65 I sub C, and there are no other constant terms anywhere, so it's just equal to zero. Negative 40 IA, minus 10 IB plus 65 I sub C. So this is the third mesh current equation. So I have three equations and three unknowns. So now I basically just use whatever method I like to solve it. So I'm gonna use matrix methods because it's easiest for me. And so what I have here, matrix A is the coefficient matrix. So I Again, notice when I've simplified all my equations, I simplify them in the same order. I A, I B, I C. And a constant on this side. I A, I B, I C. And a constant on this side. I A, I B, I C. And a constant on this side. That's on purpose, so that whenever I get to the matrix step, I can just write my coefficients in without thinking. So here, I have 45, negative 5, negative 40. 45, negative 5, and then negative 40. And then for the second equation, I have negative 5, 35, negative 10. Negative 5, 35, negative 10. For the final equation, I have negative 40, negative 10, and positive 65. So I have negative 40, negative 10, positive 65. So that closes that coefficient matrix off. And just to remind you what I've got going on here, I'm basically I have I sub A, I sub B, I sub C, that's what I'm solving for in the end. And the B matrix is what's on the right hand side. So here, this equation, I've got 100, 0, and 0. So I've got 100, 0, 0. This is the matrix form of this solution. So then, in order to solve it, basically you say that the answer I'm seeking, I sub A, I sub B, I sub C, is just gonna be the inverse of matrix A times B. You think of this as an equation, multiply both sides by the inverse. On the left, you're gonna be left with this. On the right, you're multiplying by the inverse. So what is the inverse of matrix A? You type this in a calculator, just as it sits. Um, take the inverse of it, and what you're gonna get is this. 0 0.060, 0 0.020, 0 0.040. 0 0.020, 0 0.037, 0 0.018, over here, 0 0.040, 0 0.018, 0 0.043. And this literally is one button on your calculator, so it's very simple to calculate that. I'm multiplying by the column vector B, like this. So if you take this and multiply it times this in your calculator, then what you're gonna get, let me just switch colors, I A, I B, I C is going to be equal to, when you do that multiplication, you know you've done something right when you get an answer like six, two, and four. And that's beautiful. So what you're gonna end up be, being able to say is that I sub A is six amps. Just read it like a book. I sub B is two amps, and I sub C is four amps. Now I know that you could type these equations in a calculator, press a button and get the answer, and that's cool, that's, that's fine. But by writing down just a few things, you really show your teacher you know what you're doing. You're solving it by a known system. Yes, this from here to here is just a button on your calculator, but at least you're saying, hey, I know how to solve the system of equations. I'm taking the inverse, I'm multiplying, I'm getting a column vector that equates to all of, of the guys here. Now what are we actually trying to find? We're trying to find what is the power supplied by this source? 
What's the power supply by the source? So what we have found is that I sub A is 6 amps. And notice we have a positive answer here. So that means that the direction we wrote I sub A was actually correct. So I sub A really does go up this way, which makes sense because this is a source. It has to push current out of the positive side. And notice that we said way back in the beginning of the course, way back in the beginning of circuit theory, when we're calculating power like this, it's going to be I times V. But if you have current flowing from negative to positive like this, and basically coming out of the positive terminal like this, right, as an active source, you're going to write the power with a negative convention. So because of the way that it's drawn, it's negative I V. If you've forgotten that there should be a negative there, then go back to my last volume of the circuit analysis tutor. We talked about this extensively. So it's negative. The current flowing through that source is six. The voltage drop in that source is 100. We put the negative in just because the current's actually going from negative to positive, um, which means we, we're going to treat it as a negative result. So what we get is negative 600. Watts. Since we have a negative in front of our power, the negative means it's delivered. Basically every other element in the circuit would have a positive power and if we actually went through the exercise of calculating the power here and calculating the power here and calculating the power here and here and here and adding them all together, they would all have positive signs and they would sum up to 600 watts because power uh, delivered has got to be equal to power absorbed. And by the way, just as an aside, how would you calculate the power in this resistor? Well, for this one, it's just I sub B squared, I, I squared R, so I sub B squared times R. That's easy. How would you calculate the power here? I sub C squared times 15. That's easy, okay, because those are on the boundary, so there's only one current there. How would you do it with this one? Here, you've got um, you're bordering two mesh currents. So in order to find the actual the actual current flowing through here, you have to subtract um, one of these meshes from the other one. So when you subtract them, you're going to get the actual current flowing through here, and then you square it, and then times R. When you want to calculate the power through here, you have to find the current through there. And the way you find the current through there is you have to subtract the adjacent meshes. Once you subtract them, that's going to be the current flowing in this leg, then it's I squared R. So that's how mesh current allows you, once you solve the circuit, it allows you to solve everything else. Once you know the mesh currents, you immediately know the currents flowing through all the boundary resistors and the current going through the source, you know, on the, on the edges, very much by inspection once you calculate the answer. All of the currents and all other internal branches of the circuit are just going to be subtractions of the two adjacent mesh currents, right? Um, and that's, that's kind of the short answer there. So, that is the second problem of our mesh current series. I would highly recommend that you go back and work this problem again, solve it again, make sure you're getting the sign correct uh, uh, conventions correctly. I'm still bathing it a little bit as we go here because I want to get you used to it, but ultimately you need to have this internal dialogue for yourself. As you're walking around, you make sure you have a positive voltage drop, which means you have to have IA minus IB so that you have the current flowing in the proper direction. So you see, everything's building. We learned the sign conventions way back in the last volume of circuit analysis and I told you that that was so important. You have to remember that whenever you encounter a voltage drop like this, then it means there has to be a current flowing in that direction. It has to be up here without any thinking so that you don't struggle when you write these equations. But as you can see, once you actually write the equations, this is very simple to solve I and mean, it's very linear, there's no division anywhere, and all of these mesh current problems are basically going to be like this. So there's not really much more of a trick to it than this, just need to get some practice. So practice this one. And then follow me on to the next section. We're going to work more problems in mesh current circuit analysis. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.